So now we'll look at how we can use these financial statements to help better understand our operations. The income statement shows the company's profit and loss and all the expenses and things that go into it. While the balance sheet itemizes the value of the assets at a, at a point in time, its liabilities and owner's equity. Together, these two statements provide the means to answer two critical questions. How much did the firm make or lose? And what were the levers that caused that either success or failure? And how much, of the firm, how much is the firm presently worth based upon the historical values of the balance sheet? This is ratio analysis is the, are the calculations that measure the organization's financial health and brings the complex information from the income statement and balance sheet into, so, into a sharper focus so that managers, lenders, owners, and other interested parties can measure and compare the organization's productivity, its profitability, its financing mix, where the various, uh, how, how well the various functions in the organization are performing, and compare it with similar entities. As you know, a ratio is simply one number divided by another. The result shows the relationship between the two numbers. But there, since you're using common and consistent information because of financial standards or accounting standards, you can compare one company to another. Whether these numbers are good or bad depends upon their relationship to other numbers, such as ratios of prior performance or performance of peer companies. Since you're using comparable information, this all becomes very useful in improving efficiency and effectiveness. Remember, while profitability, asset utilization, liquidity, debt ratios, and per share data we'll look at here can be very useful, you'll never see the forest by looking only at the trees. They provide indicators of what's going on deeper at a deeper level. Profitability ratios measure how much operating income or net income an organization is, e is able to generate relative to its assets. It, its owners its assets or its owners equity or its sales common profitability ratios include profit margin return on assets and return on equity the following slides will help provide some examples they're taking from microsoft sample financial statements that are shown in the textbook the numerator the top number is all in in all of the examples is net income after taxes and in millions and less noted elsewhere so you can kind of follow along and take a look as we go forward remember a ratio is simply one number divided by another number the result shows the relationship between those two numbers for example fuel efficiency Dividing the number of miles per gallon shows you that you get 55 miles per gallon in a particular car. A Toyota Prius, for example, is better than the average car. Financial ratios use, are, that are used to weight and evaluate a firm's performance are very similar to this. An absolute value, such as earnings of $70,000 or accounts receivable $200,000, almost never provides much useful information because you don't really know the context to consider it, whereas a well-constructed ratio does provide more useful information. Whether those numbers are good or bad depends upon their relationship to other numbers. For example, if a company earns $70,000 on $700,000 in sales, a 10% return, such as earnings level, it provides a 10% return or 10% profit margin if you will. Uh, that might be uh, quite satisfactory if you understand how that industry is functioning. The president of a company earning that same $70,000 on $7 million, a 1% return, uh, wouldn't look very good at all in that situation. So you got to realize that the way that you understand the context is by knowing what a firm in your industry is like, what kind of profit margin, their expense ratios, in other words, how much you spend on sales versus revenue as a percent of revenue compared to other people in the industry is really, or, or your prior performance is really how you start to think about how an organization or how you're doing from a profit perspective. So let's get a little more uh, specific. 
profit margin is computed by div dividing net income by sales. This shows the percentage of overall profits that are earned by the company. The percentage of every dollar that comes in of revenue that get, you get to keep as an owner of the company. It's based solely upon data from the income statement. The higher the profit margin, the better the cost controls within the company, and the higher the return on every single dollar of revenue. Microsoft's profit margin is calculated as follows. Profit margin equals net income, that is net earnings, divided by sales, which is total net revenue. Microsoft's net revenue was 21.76, oh, excuse me, 21,000 eight hundred and sixty three million divided by its sales of seven of seventy seven thousand eight hundred and forty nine million and that equals a profit margin of twenty eight point zero eight percent so for every one dollar of sales Microsoft generated twenty eight a little over twenty eight cents of profit after it paid its taxes this is a very good number uh, for, for profit. It's, this is typical of companies that have a lot of intellectual property as part of their organization. They are in relatively high profit margin. You might compare that with a restaurant or a manufacturing facility or something like that and come up with different numbers. But if you compare it with other software companies, you'll get a better sense as to how Microsoft is doing vis-a-vis -vis other uh, members or other um, companies within their industry. Return on assets is the net income divided by total assets on the balance sheet. This shows how much income the firm produces for every dollar of invested assets. A company with a low return on assets is probably not using its assets very, productive, very productively. This could be a problem with management. For this equation, we need the information from both the income statement and the balance sheet. Return on assets equals net income, that is net earnings, divided by total assets. You can see Microsoft's numbers here, 21,863 million divided by 142,431 million equals 15.35% on return on assets. So that's, uh, that is equal to um, for every dollar in assets, Microsoft generates this 15.35% return. Um, so that's, a, as you can see, that's a, a very uh, reasonable return. And that's, that's the way that one would think about how Microsoft is doing with its assets vis-a-vis -vis other people in comparable industries. And you could understand a little bit better how well the organization is generating profits based upon the amount of assets that it has on the balance sheet. Of course, remember assets is equal to liabilities plus equities. So another thing to consider is how much profit is being generated for each dollar of owner's equity. That is return on investment, return on equity. Stockholders are always concerned with how much money they make after all the bills are paid, including the, uh, the and the financial uh, debts are subtracted out. So you could calculate return on equity. This is calculated by dividing net income by the owner's equity. This shows how much income is generated for every $1 the owners have invested in the firm. A low RO return on equity means low stockholder returns. Microsoft's equity is calculated as follows. You have 21 billion divided by their shareholders equity of 78.944 million or 78.9 billion for a return on equity of 27.69%. Every dollar invested by stockholders drives 27% return, a uh, very high return on investment for, for, S, for investors. Uh, this is the sort of returns one would hope to get from a, a well-performing equity uh, investment in, an, in a well-performing company. So this is how return on equity works.